morning, my Soka universe. It was an interesting evening yesterday. Actually, there was quite some more action than could be expected. Uh, that I expected, actually. I completely forgot again about the German Cup. Uh, let's start maybe right there with that. Um, Bayern Munich winning at Hertha 3 2 after overtime. Um, a game that they should have well decided uh, during regulation. Uh, totally dom dom total dominance, but you know, Hertha took a very early lead and just a few minutes later, I think after seven minutes, it was already 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's a little bit like the uh, Croatia-Denmark game that we had at the World Cup, where there were also two very quick goals. But uh, the game didn't become necessarily boring. Uh, and Bayern took a lead um, early in the second half, and then Hertha with their second shot on the goal. Uh, horrible defending error by Homers uh, makes it 2 2, and they, da, da, does it ends and goes into overtime. Uh, so, and then Bayern wins it with a, I think, a header in overtime. Everyone, as I said, way more way more uh, work than was needed. Um, another game was overshadowed by the death of former manager Rudi Assa, a uh, long-time Schalke manager, East Devon, who built this, had the stadium built where they won the UEFA Cup in 97 in, and yeah, uh, so they had this big ceremony ahead of that game that Schalke won relatively easy for one. And was there, I think, against Düsseldorf? Was there one more game? Yeah, Leipzig against Wolfsburg was a wonderful game. Um, also saw one highlight from the French Cup between uh, Rennes and Lille. It was actually quite interesting because Lille is this, uh, the big, it was, I would have said, the favorite, but they shot themselves in the, in the foot uh, by having, getting a red card early in the first half. Uh, they still took the lead, I think with 15 minutes even only to go through Pepe. Uh, and then just two minutes later, uh, Substitute made it 1-1 and then in stoppage time 2-1 for win. I also saw that PSG won 3-0 uh, uh, against, I think, Villefranche. So that was that and let's get to the big games, uh, the two that really stood out above the rest. And I'm going to start in the Premier League, where thanks to the League Cup, Manchester City had to play at Everton. And it was all Manchester City, but before I start with that, uh, Jersey matchup, horrible. Uh, kit matchup, I should say. Jersey, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with light blue against the royal blue of Everton. What I'm not okay with is that both used uh, white pants. and. Uh, that create and then the dark socks with uh, City it was a really. I mean, I watched a little bit and I watched the highlights. I felt it was a, a little bit hard to watch. Uh, I think either City should have gone uh, gone also with uh, darker pants, or I, mean, I was even, even thinking why is City not using. I mean, even if they use their. Uh, Way kit uh, all dark. I mean, yes, it's not an ideal color uh, situation, but it would be an all dark look against the blue white of Everton, and I think there would be a little bit more contrast. I did not like that at all. But I did not like really the result either. And this is not against City, it's just I don't want City to win this championship. But yeah, they win 2 0. I think Laporte uh, makes the 1 0 just before half time, stoppage time of the first half, uh, header. And uh, Gabriel Jesus gets the 2 0 in stoppage time of the second half. So, if the referee would have not given a stop, stoppage time might have ended 0 0. And we would have Liverpool still in front. Now, Manchester City is actually taking the first spot in the Premier League, but with one more game. So, yeah, uh, not sure how happy I am about that whole situation, but yeah, it, it is what it is. To see how Liverpool will continue. I actually have to say, when I think about Liverpool and having Bayern, um, 
when I think generally about the Champions League now. Liverpool, Bayern, just a month ago I would have said Liverpool is going to run to Bayern. Uh, similarly, uh, PSG will do it with United. Uh, uh, Dortmund, Tottenham seems like an open game. I think it's again an open game. Uh, so that's exciting. But yeah, it's very interesting to me how things can change over the winter break and everyone knows it in a way. And yeah. Let's see where it all goes. And then there was the biggest game of course. Uh, and it is only Copa del Rey, it's only the first, but it is El Clasico. And I watched the game, despite Messi not playing. Um, what can I say? El Clasico rarely fails to deliver. To, to I have to say it, uh, first off, I actually like El Clasico better at the Bernabeu uh, because I feel that while the crowd is still very much partisan towards Real Madrid, it is not this outright hatred. Um, it very, I also find that there are better games at the Bernabeu, uh, mostly because Barcelona has been so dominant of late that Real Madrid typically takes a more defensive approach uh, at the uh, Camp Nou. Whereas the games at the Bernabeu a little bit more open. It might, I might be completely wrong with my perception, but I always feel that the better games are usually played at the Bernabeu. Uh, also where Barcelona gets their bigger wins, in a way. Yes, they beat them 5-1 without Messi uh, earlier this season, but that was when Real Madrid was at their absolute worst. So, uh, that has surely changed now and it really has changed uh, because the way Real Madrid approached that game was actually quite in interesting with a uh, very high press and right from, from the beginning uh, you could see that Barcelona is anything but comfortable. Uh, I, I think it was right in the first few, few minutes that Real, Real Madrid actually was already dangerous and I think there was a slight attack by Barcelona but I said nah doesn't look it was it did not look fluid it didn't look like a team it really looked like Bars, uh, the, like Real Madrid with a very high press it's absolutely uh, disturbing Barcelona and yeah they got the early lead uh, was a uh, Vinicius Jr. I think uh, overran Jordi Alba who was out of position put in a cross that now nah, Pique was dead and then Jordi, Jordi Alba uh, completely misjudged uh, where he was in where Bruno Zema was. Bonzema did it a great move towards the touchline and puts it in where there's Lucas Vasquez um, and just needs to poke it into the net. Was in its delivery, it was a it was a great goal. But if you look at the individual uh, defending mistakes that Barcelona made, I think um, some teams might take notice of that. Of course, Barcelona was not playing uh, with Messi; it was Malcolm uh, playing for him, and uh, he needed some time to get going. But once he got going, he was a really, really good player on the field. Um, probably even the best man but you know it took some time until it got going I think the uh, kind of one switch was when uh, there was suddenly a counter-attack that Malcolm botched badly I think um, he would he, he wanted to take the he wanted to take the shot too early I think he could have easily rounded the goalkeeper and put it into the uh, empty net or even chip it over the goalkeeper. Uh, you know, if this would, would have been Messi, although uh, we'll talk about him later, I actually have a feeling that uh, this might have been 1-0, or even Suarez would, would, would have made it. It was ruled offside, but I'm sure if this was would have been a gun and goal, uh, the um, uh, video assistant would have had this goal stand. And so Barcelona, fought itself into the game and, and you could see that Real Madrid cannot keep the high press really up on this disruptive play. Uh, but it was a very even contest and yeah, towards the end of the second half, I first half, I really had the feeling that Barcelona now is uh, taking control of the game uh, and they had serious chances. I think the biggest one was when Rakitic headed onto the bar after free kick. I mean there were there was a plethora of free kicks around the box that Malcolm all took and uh, that was when he suddenly came into his own. Um, 
but it still ended 1-0 at half uh, 0-1 0-1 at half time um, second half Barcelona comes out storming and now it was Bar Madrid hanging back um, and letting Barcelona actually dominate the game I think that's the best way to put it um, and sure enough they had another chance I think uh, was there another post at least Markham had one big chance and uh, in the 67th it finally the equalizer came also via a little bit old defending in my view of Real Madrid there was a um, great pass that Suarez then takes a shot from far outside and hits actually the near post but it will imagery he shot from outside the box on the side uh, the rebound goes straight to Malcolm who um, controls it and puts it towards the net, takes a slight deflection and goes also in on the other side of the, 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 the near post. But at that moment it felt like everyone at Real Madrid does, 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 doesn't know what's happening, they're just running around the box. 1-1, one, one. yeah, you want to win that game, who do you put on? Messi. But seeming you tell Messi, you know, your leg is not that, uh, your hamstring is not that well, um, better do not do any, 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 any sprints, just distribute the ball. And I think. Whatever it was, Messi didn't look like Messi. I mean, uh, there were some really bad, some really odd passes that you don't see from Messi, or some moves where you could really see he doesn't want to take the risk or the sprint. He just uh, is kind of controlling the game more or less. So Barcelona tried to really get uh, go for for the win, but starting and I think they. Real Madrid for, between the 70th and the 80th seemed to be a little bit off the ropes but Barcelona also kind of invested so much that I think they just couldn't get it uh, together anymore and then in the last 10 minutes Real Madrid started, started with the pesky game again and they held Barcelona at bay to the point where they even could have scored the win I think in the last 10 minutes Real Madrid got energy again and I think if they would have put the winner I'm not sure deserves it probably too strong, but it would not have surprised me at that point. Uh, they were threatening, of course. Um, Ter Stegen had a situation where he came out, uh, and Bale eventually receives the ball, but takes it on, also botches it a little bit like Malcolm, uh, puts it on his weaker right foot, and there uh, was just no chance that he can put it in. So yeah, that was, uh, so it ends 1-1. Uh, you would say it uh, thanks to the away goal advantage Real Madrid, but I think a commentator said it right that uh, Barcelona always manages to score a goal at the Bernabeu somehow. So um, it pretty much open. And now we have three weeks for the return, and then there's the Clásico in the in La Liga just four days later. It was a nice prelude. The game was thoroughly enjoyable and you could see that those are still two of the best teams in Europe. Uh, it scares me a little bit that Real Madrid is getting something going, uh, especially in terms of Champions League. Honestly, I, I really don't want them to win anything in Europe for a while. Uh, especially since you again have the feeling they are not the strongest team, but you know. Their season starts now and the team looks like a team again and that will make it dangerous, I think. Barcelona, I'm afraid that Barcelona is putting too much of the eggs in the Champions League basket. Uh, I know that's the big goal, but I also have the feeling um, you might lose sight of other things and it might not work. It is smart to take Messi out and you know have him recover, da, 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 but I'm still a little bit wary about where this will all lead, uh, and I'm not sure if Barcelona will actually. Uh, to me, they're still the strongest team, but I'm I'm a little bit worried about the defense, uh, to be honest. But hey, it all remains to be seen. The games need to be played. So yeah, it was a nice Wednesday evening. Uh, you cannot complain about it at all.
between your classic <laughs> it, that game rarely fails to to live in even if it's only copper delray i have some some thought that we might see the two face off in the champions league but again who knows well let me know your thoughts on all these games yesterday uh if you watched any if you want to see anything uh if you disagree with me, most importantly, um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.